Owning a home in Naperville is about living a great life today and investing in a secure tomorrow. On this show, we're going to give you the tools to do both. Welcome to the Naperville Real Estate Weekly Market Update. Hey, Naperville, I'm Chris Grano with Keller Williams Realty. Alongside me is Todd Gosden with Compass Mortgage, and we are your hosts for the Naperville Real Estate Weekly Market Update. Todd, how are you doing this week? I am doing great. Thanks for asking, buddy. Good, man. I'm so glad to hear it. So today we're uh, picking up our conversation from last week where we touched on home renovations. And Todd and I you know, discussed and said, hey, this is a really big topic. And to try to tackle it in just one show is, is really doing a disservice to the folks who were, you know, we're promising to give you some tips and tools to maintain your investment for the long term. Yeah. So we're going to talk today. Uh, Todd's going to give us a couple different ways to finance renovations because I think a lot of folks wonder, well, do I have to have the cash available? Or what does that look like? So we're going to touch on that in just a second. And before we do that, we're going to talk real quickly about the numbers this week in Neighborville. So last week we were coming out of Easter. And we saw a slight downturn in some of the numbers that we track weekly. But this week, Todd, we are right back on track. So great news. The market's continuing to heat up. We have 122 new listings in Naperville this week. Uh, so that's up from two weeks ago when we were at 115. And we had this week 129 homes go under contract. So again, what this means for you guys is that for buyers, there's more homes starting to come to market. And there's for you sellers, there are still plenty of buyers out there ready to take that house off your hands. So don't fret, don't stress, just make sure you're doing things the right way. Uh, we also had 59 homes closed this week. And then let's touch quickly on inventory. Uh, so as we see those new listings and new activity happen, how does that affect the existing inventory? Not a whole lot. We saw a slight increase in the inventory under 500,000, but nothing notable, still a strong seller's market. We saw the same thing, just a slight increase in the 500 to 750 range. We saw market times dip just a little bit. So that's good, meaning it takes homes a little bit less time to sell in those two particular price brackets. And then above 750, 750 to a million, we actually saw inventory decrease just a, a tiny bit. Again, pretty steady and the same thing over a million. So pretty steady over the last few weeks as far as inventory goes. And I think Todd and I and all the buyers out there hope that the inventory will go up as we uh, get into coming weeks here. Yep. So Todd, Todd, well, tell us what's going on in your world. Any conversations this week that just just things that are on your heart? Well, I think that, you know, the market is really uh, putting itself in a great position to have a wonderful spring and a great summer, probably leading right into deep fall at this yes. point time. You know, uh, there's no shortage of people wanting to buy. I think hopefully with inventory starting to flow back into the market um, is going to be a really great thing starting probably in the coming weeks and months. So I think everything is a go for anybody who is looking to buy a house. And I think our topic today is very timely because we are seeing lots and lots and lots of conversation of, What's it look like to renovate a home, right? And go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. And I see it from many different people. I see it for folks who are maybe getting ready to renovate so that they can sell for a higher price Yeah. or folks or folks who are renovating so they can hunker down and just really enjoy their home. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that I think people have to recognize the fact of, you know, the most common question is, well, how do I do something like that? Right. And when you start thinking about that, it really comes down to this. Are you looking to do the labor yourself or are you going to have somebody else do it? So that's that DIY type project um, and sweat labor yourself versus paying for laborers or what's the size of the project, hmm. right? So traditionally in its, in its easiest sense, what most people always typically do is they'll say, hey, listen, I have a little bit of equity in my house. I'm going to do what they call a home equity line of credit on the home and just utilize some of the, the equity I have in the home to do my small project that we're going to do through the spring and summer months. But then you have others that say, hey, listen, I want to renovate the bathrooms. I want to renovate the kitchen and all that. And so it goes from maybe a ten dollars or $20,000 project to $150,000 to $175,000. Now, <laughs> that's a whole different world because now you're looking at architects. You're looking at all kinds of different and additional things that come into it expense-wise. An equity line is very, very inexpensive, very easy to get. Renovation is, hey, listen, we need to spend some money and create some blueprints and have a general contractor that's going to do this for us, right? 
because we all know what happens when we get into a, what we think is a DIY and turns out to be something bigger, right? It never gets finished, right. right? But I think the one most important thing to remember in doing something like this, something that's complicated but yet very simple, is that when you're doing a line of credit, they're basically appraising the house based on its current value. Okay, and that equity allows between your mortgage and the equity of the appraised value determines how much dollars you can get to do your projects. When you do a renovation, when you're starting to think about construction type things like renovation loans, they take the blueprints and they base it on future value once the project is completed. So that is something really, really interesting that people have to remember is, is that if you have a lot of equity in your house and you want to do it in general contract stuff, go right ahead. But if you're looking for someone to general contract it and you want to have blueprints and you have architects and you're ripping down walls and all kinds of things, we got to go the other direction with the renovation loan. And, and both are very simple, but yet very unique and complicated in their own way sometimes. And I think that's where they have to rely on someone like myself or you to give them direction on What's that look like? Because we go back to the same conversation of last week. You can put as much money in your house as you want. We just don't want to overprice the neighborhood. Right. Right. And, and that's where it kind of comes in. And Todd, is, are, are, is a renovation loan available to someone who's purchasing a house for the first time as well as the existing homeowner? Or is that only for someone who's like, in other words, I'm out shopping for a house. Yeah. I might can I, I'm going to take out a renovation loan on a fixer upper that's available to me? Well, yeah. I mean, there's all different kinds of, of, of pursuits and angles down the road you can take with this. Okay. Because no matter, it's it comes down to this. It's a very hard thing to talk about in video because it's very personal. Sure. Because if I'm going down the road, there is a basically a, a junction in the road where I have to go left or right. Yeah. And if we go left, then there becomes another juncture left or right. So it's a, it's a series of conversations that you have to have to get you to the place that's going to represent what you're trying to accomplish in that home. Yeah, so, so it's very, very individual. I'm sure it depends entirely too on yeah. the financial the financial situation that they're in. And yeah, course, it's so. very, very specific and there's something for everybody. It's just a matter of what that looks like. For you to try and figure that out on your own is a very difficult thing because the when you're starting to forecast future values and doing work yourself and you're doing permitting and all that, it's a it's a big undertaking to take on by yourself for sure. Yeah. So it's just like with buying the best place, really, if, if somebody out there is ready to do some renovations of the home and you're talking of a scope of that nature um, is is start with someone like yourself and myself. Yeah, you, you have to talk to someone. I mean, listen, I've seen people or clients of ours who decide they're going to put in their own brick patio and all of a sudden uh, the village drives by, tells them to stop because they have to go get a permit. and They have no idea what they're permitting or what it looks like. And, and so those are the things that you're going to run into that you'd probably rather not run into. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Hey, perfect, Todd. Thank you for touching on that today. We're going to continue that conversation in the next couple of weeks. And we'll talk about some of the things that you can do, what you expect as far as future return on your value. Yes. And as, as always, continue to follow Todd and myself on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and on YouTube. We're going to let you go for today. Todd, I will see you next week. See you next week, everybody. All right, take care.